Hey, this is Mark Moore, aka Tuxedo Mark, in various places on the internet. It's 3.43 p.m. according to the computer clock on Friday, April 13, 2012. Happy Friday the 13th. <laughs> okay, uh, today I want to discuss Highlander continuity. Um, I had done a video about this before, but for some reason the uh, audio cut out or something um, part way through, so I'm redoing it now. Uh, and I hope to remember to say everything that I said last time, and maybe I'll even come up with some new things to say. We'll see. Okay, uh, I've already talked about in my look back at Highlander about my history with Highlander, but uh, I would like to discuss, and this is primarily, I guess, for non-fans or people that are casual fans, because the, I think the hardcore fans would uh, pretty much already know all of this stuff, uh, and I'm not really a an absolute hardcore fan of Highlander, but I'm more than a casual fan. Uh, so I'm somewhere in the middle. Um, but even for the hardcore fans, uh, there uh, might be some things in here to consider. So, uh, alright, let's... For those of you that don't know, the Highlander franchise is a mess in regards to continuity. Um, I'll go in chronological order, just start at the beginning and work my work way forward. I think that's probably the best way to handle this. Okay, in the beginning, the movie Highlander from 1986. It's uh, it's self-contained. Um, a uh, bunch of immortals fighting for the prize. One of them, Connor McLeod, wins the prize. The end. Okay. That's a standalone movie. So, you could just count that as the one universe, as in Highlander 1. Okay. There, uh... It, it was quite obvious that this movie was never intended to have a sequel. Um... But yet, they tried. <laughs> they tried and they failed. <laughs> um, okay, Highlander 2 The Quickening. It's nicknamed The Sickening for a reason. Uh, it takes the first Highlander into account, sort of, but it contradicts so much of it and adds this, this backstory that the Immortals were really aliens from planet Zeist or whatever, and that they were sent to Earth where they became immortal. It was really bad, and uh, it, 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 it's basically been ignored ever since, except every so often when they try to re-release on DVD and tinker with it. Uh, okay, the, the Zeist version was never released on DVD. It was released on VHS, and I had first, you know, seen it from when my friend Mike had rented it. Um, and I also saw it on TV later on. But anyway, um, they released a DVD version called the Renegade Edition, or the Renegade version, or whatever. Uh, where instead of the Immortals being from another planet, they're from the distant past, and they can travel backwards and forwards in time. Never mind that in the past you see spaceships in the background, but whatever. Um, it didn't help. And then they released like a second revision of it also to revise the Renegade version. I haven't seen either of these and I, I really don't care to. But anyway. If you want... Now you've got the 1-2 universe. That's the that's second continuity. The 1-2 universe. That's one with some revisions plus this plus two any version of it. I don't I don't freaking care. And just just you know 
put it aside and forget about it. So you got one and you got one, two. All right, now we have the, uh, next in 1992, they had the Highlander TV series. Uh, this was originally, supposedly, it was originally meant to pick up after the first movie, after Connor won the prize and Brenda's off somewhere. And I guess Connor's supposedly is supposed to use this, uh, use his uh, gift of the prize to help humanity or whatever. But this was changed when you know, Christopher Lambert didn't want to do the series, so they got uh, Adrian Paul, and then Adrian suggested um, that he play a different McCloud instead of Connor, so Duncan McCloud was created. Okay. The TV series takes place in the present time in the 1990s. It kind of acknowledges the first movie in various episodes. And Christopher Lambert did appear as Connor McCloud in the first episode, kind of as a passing of the torch. Uh, but the, obviously the main difference is Connor didn't win the prize. Uh, because there's still a bunch of immortals running around and there's new ones being, you know, like created every day. Uh, the first season and a bit into the second season, they talk about the gathering and how Duncan's like, you know, uh, who's to say any of us will be around in a hundred years? So it looks like th this is like the final, the final um, stage of the game. Uh, they never really specify what it is, and the fan theory basically is that. New immortals have stopped being born. They, they, they like pre-immortals are still around, and they can you know become immortal, but no new immortals are born. That's supposedly a thing. Okay. Um. So the TV series universe it ran for six seasons. Then Amanda had her own spin-off series, Highlander the Raven. Um. Okay, the TV series the universe is going to get complex. Uh, I'll try to... Uh, okay. Then, uh... We have... In 2000... In uh, 2000, after Raven was cancelled, we had the uh, theatrical movie, Highlander Endgame, that was meant kind of to bridge the TV universe with the first movie, they further acknowledged the first movie and stuff, and Connor McCloud was brought back, and uh, uh, some people have a problem with it, and I, I enjoy it personally, but then in 2007 there was Highlander The Source, and that was such an abomination. It was a direct sci-fi channel movie, and then it was put on DVD. <sighs> Supposedly, it was like the second movie in the TV series continuity, and it was supposed to be the first of a new trilogy, believe it or not, but uh, it did so horrendously that those plans were, you know, killed. Um... Anyway, and then they've acknowledged that basically the source went the way of two, like it never happened, it was like Duncan's nightmare or whatever. Uh, in fact, in uh, 2008 at uh, Highlander Con, uh, Adrian Paul and Elizabeth Grayson got together as Duncan and Amanda to do a little skit, like a play, at a, where they meet up at a cafe and Duncan was like, you know, I had this uh, horrible nightmare, and he start, he described some events from the source. <laughs> that was funny. Um, also, uh, in 2008, they came out with a uh, short reunion episode. It was a low budget or no budget thing where you got you know Joe, Mythos, and Amanda. It was like a 15 minute mini sode or like a webisode on the internet. Um, yes, I know that's redundant. And, uh, 
the, the thing is, it seems to contradict the source as well, as well because uh, in the source, Joe says, uh, Joe basically uh, renounces his oath as a watcher, and he also says there is no watcher organization anymore. But in uh, Reunion, which takes place in the present day, not the future like the source, uh, Joe basically says he's kind of been forced into retirement. So that seems to contradict the source as well. Uh, now, in the past few years, there have been two seasons of audio adventures. Uh, a company called Big Finish came in, came in and did Highlander audio adventures. Um, they got Adrian Paul and they got other cast members from the series. I haven't listened to them yet, but uh, yeah, I should check them out sometime. Uh, there have been some novels back during the time of the TV series. Um, supposedly those are canon because they're mentioned in the uh, Watchers Chronicles that are uh, extras on the DVD sets. Uh, there's also some comic books. Um, let's see. Uh, for the Highlander uh, Blu-rays, uh, the TV series Blu-rays, starting with season two and I think running across a few season sets, there's going to be some new... Uh, like minisodes, minisode series. There's Highlander the Watchers, and I forget the name of the other one, but uh, yeah, they're they're being made by like you know fans, but they're like you know legitimate uh, Blu-ray extras, and I'm looking forward to seeing them uh, take place in the present day. Apparently, uh, I'm just just further adventures in the TV series universe uh, with all new characters. Um, let's see, uh, there, there have been some comic books too, which I haven't read, and I never read the novels either. Um, so, the TV series universe. Uh, the, it's like, okay, you got Highlander the series. Got a man, Amanda spin-off series, Highlander the Raven. Um, Highlander Endgame. Oh, you got um, you got a Flash animated series from uh, 2001, I believe, starring uh, Mythos. Peter Wingfield voiced them in the series, so you got that. The Mythos Chronicles. I I haven't watched them personally. Uh. You got um, the novels, the comic books, the audio uh, episodes, um, the Watchers, the other, or, or the Watcher, and the other mini show thing. Um, did I mention the comic books? I think. Well, anyway, like you got you got a bunch of stuff in the TV series universe, so that's very uh, expansive. That that's the biggest Highlander continuity that there is. Um, so that that's the third continuity. Okay, I'm going to address. Uh, the source. You could have the source continuity, which is the entire TV series continuity, um, minus like reunion and, and probably the Watcher and the other Blu ray minisodes or whatever, and possibly the audio adventures too, I don't know. But you got the source continuity, that's most of the TV series continuity plus uh, the source and then just go away okay forget about it um, 
1995, you had Highlander 3, The Final Dimension, or... No, it was Highlander, The Final Dimension, or Highlander 3, The Sorcerers in Europe, or whatever. I know by Highlander, The Final Dimension. That takes one into account, except Connor supposedly somehow didn't win the prize, even though he thought he did, because there were, like, other immortals frozen in ice, or whatever. Which would make sense under a TV series universe where the immortals die and then are revived, but in the first movie it shows that they come close to death but don't actually die and then they just revive. So I don't know how Connor could have thought he won the prize or like he said the prize was mine, but then uh the bad guy, I forget his name at the moment, uh Mario Van Peebles uh, said the prize was, was never yours and now it never will be. Whatever. But that's the 1 plus 3 universe. So that's the fifth continuity. Um, and it ignores this t the TV series and all that stuff. Um, so that's five continuities. Uh, back in the 90s, you had Highlander the Animated Series. That supposedly acknowledged one. I've never seen it except some brief snippets on syndicated TV very early in the morning. Back in the day. I could get the DVD set, but I really don't feel like it. Um, so that's the animated continuity. It's like one... Plus the animated series or whatever. I don't know. 2007. Um, same year that the source came out. They had an anime in Japan. Highlander the Search for Vengeance. That doesn't seem to be connected to anything. Except it's got Immortals and it's got a McLeod that's an Immortal. It's a good movie too. Uh, but it doesn't seem connected to anything else. Um, so that's the seventh continuity. Then you've got like, uh, you've got the game. I'm not talking about the animated series game for the Atari Jaguar CD. I mean like, there's like Highlander the Game on, uh, PS3 I think that came out a few years ago. I don't know if it was 2008 or what, but anyway, so I... That's probably its own continuity too, so I'm going to call it the eighth continuity. Um, well, that's all I, that I can think of at the moment. Like I'm counting eight continuities in Highlander. Um, let's see. Uh, yeah, so. I think that's about it. I, I just wanted to share my theories with you on Highlander continuity and how they relate or don't relate to each other. Uh, and uh, it's just turned 4.02 p.m. and that's it. Thanks for watching.